Nice. Hello and welcome fans to this live video streaming event from Table Rock Sports Productions in partnership with our local school districts and sponsors. I'm Jim McCoy along with Mark McLemore on the camera, Johnny McCoy from Cascade Christian High School in Medford, Oregon. We thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Lithia Superstore Game Night powered by Siskiyou Cellular in Southern Oregon. Tonight we're featuring the Coquille Red Devils versus the Cascade Christian Challengers League playoff action tonight in the far west. We're pleased to bring you this game on TableRockSports.net in partnership with our community business partners. Joe Brett is the executive producer for tonight's event. Our sponsors keep these events free for fans to enjoy. Please let them know you appreciate their support. And we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search Table Rock Sports and click on the red subscribe button. We will let you know when the games go live. Red Devils and Challengers, they've seen each other once during the regular season. The Challengers won on the road 76 to 41. Red Devils coming in with an overall record of 16 and 10 and 9 and 5 in the Far West League. Their last loss came back on the 28th of January at North Valley in a four point decision. Meanwhile, the Challengers won up one down last week as they lost to 5A powerhouse Churchill, but they bounced back with a big senior night victory against the St. Mary's Crusaders, 61 to 45 to cap off the regular season. And Mark coming into the ball game, I think it's just gonna come down to, a, by the time you get to this point, it really gonna come down to defense on, on both teams. Yeah, it really does. I mean, the Challengers have played great defense all year long. And if you look at, you know, what they've been doing this year as far as holding opponents, um, most opponents, with the exception of, the, of their couple of losses against some very good opponents in Churchill and Junction City, are in the 20s, 30s, and 40s for uh, scoring. And uh, meanwhile, the Challengers scoring anywhere from 70 to 90 on the offensive side. So I don't expect that to change much. I know we don't. It looks like Austin uh, um, still out. Uh, at least for this game, Austin Maurer, you know, the seven-footer. But uh, the rest of the guys ready to go today, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, this game plays out. The last two, you mentioned it, the last time these two teams met, uh, the Challengers did a nice job with a 41-76 win for Cascade Christian. And I don't expect this game to go much differently. Uh, you know, I'm sure Coquille has a little bit of confidence. You mentioned it. They're coming in off of a five-game winning streak. So we might see some resistance for a couple of quarters or so. But, uh, you know, I think the talent of the, that's on the Challenger should prevail today as we go into uh, certainly into the second half. Well, recalling how the game went last time, for well, probably about a quarter, maybe going into the uh, second, Coquille playing on their home floor, did a good job of hanging with the Challengers a little bit. I remember Zach Farmer getting going early in the ball game. Also Hunter Layton in the ball game, but... Uh, uh, what I remember that last go around, it was a big night for Cannon Anderson. Anderson did not start the game, but he ended up with 20 points on the night. And I think it was from there that really kind of built the basis for what has been a nice, solid season for him. And the guy that's been the recipient of the starts in place of Austin Maurer has been Anderson. And when you look at it, and I think that's going to be the big challenge for the Red Devils coming into this ball game, is you have players like Athletic players like Drew Hall, high basketball IQ guy like Jaron Frankoviak, and then you have uh, Anderson in that mix along with Peyton Maurer and Tristan Wallace, is that you have a very athletic team that is going to make life difficult, I think, for the backcourt of Coquille, that their challenge is going to be essentially, you know, it's going to be important for them to take care of the basketball. Well, and you mentioned it. We look back a little bit at the stats from the last game. Um, Hunter Layton had 11, and uh, Zach Farmer had 12, and they did most of the damage. Uh, DeGrasse had, uh, uh, or Gaderos, excuse me, had seven for Coquia. Those were their three leading scorers in that game. For the Challengers, you mentioned Cantor Anderson had 20, one of his best games of the season. Uh, Frankowiak with 16, and Drew Hall had 21. So the usual suspects, Peyton Maurer with nine, all threes. Um, so I would expect, you know, that those guys are going to step up again tonight um, uh, in a similar way. Um, and, it, you know, we mentioned it, uh, you know, previously, but the Challengers in that game got off to a great start. They scored 26 points in the first quarter. And anytime you do that, 
um, you know, it's only an eight-minute quarter. Um, <laughs> that is a really good start. Um, probably not going to see that tonight. I would be highly uh, suspicious of that. Uh, we probably won't see 26 points in the first quarter by the Challengers, but that's what really helped them in that game over in Coquille is they got off to that huge start in that first quarter. Well, and it's always interesting when you see a pair of teams playing each other for a second time or a third time in a season. You've learned a few things from, from the prior meeting. What will be interesting to see in this ball game is uh, what life looks like for the Red Devils now that they've seen the challengers once. How will they adjust? What things will they do differently to try to change the outcome of the game? As far as the uh, challengers are concerned, it, it, it goes the same way, but what we know from seeing the challengers game in and game out, it's a lot about man-to-man -man pressure defense and <laughs> trying to create turnovers, and when you create turnovers, you create fast break opportunities when you have those you have easy baskets absolutely i uh, just i don't know if you noticed jim this year i looked a little bit into the state tournament and just thought i'd mention a few things about that this year the bracket is different i don't know if you noticed but there's actually two uh, play-in games prior to the normal round of 16 or excuse me four playing games prior to the normal round of 16 so in this year's uh, playoffs 20 teams are going to get in uh, to the playoffs instead of the normal 16. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out going forward. Um, a couple of teams maybe from our conference besides us and, uh, you know, and and uh, Douglas, who kind of led the conference. Coquille probably has a decent shot of making the playoffs, at least as one of those play-in teams. Um, right now, uh, you know, ranked in the top uh, 25 and, uh, you know, up through number 20 is going to get a good shot at making the playoffs. Well, for Coquille, looking at their overall season, a lot of their losses came early in the year. They had a four-game losing streak back at about the beginning of December. And when you look at how they have fared pretty much since the Challengers uh, game with them back on the 20th, that, uh, you know, they ended up... Uh, losing at home to St. Mary's, losing on the road to North Valley, but otherwise uh, a victorious against Sutherland, South Umqua. South Umqua can be a tough team. And then they beat Douglas at their place. Yeah, which is one, one of the surprising games of the season to me is that Coquille managed to pull off that victory against Douglas, and that really sort of solidified their spot as making the uh, league playoffs. And then they're able to uh, come into this game after beating a Brookings Harbor team um, that also was sort of having a good second half of the season, but Coquille managed to get the victory there and, and earn their spot in playing the Challengers tonight. Well, it's going to be a fun game to watch, and there's a reason why we play these games on courts and not on paper. We're going to take a quick timeout. This portion of the pregame show has been brought to you by Taprock on the Rogue River in Grants Pass. Locally owned, family run. Check out the new menu and the great views at Tap Rock. We'll go ahead and take a quick timeout, and when we return, we'll get you ready for the start of tonight's ball game. It is the Challengers versus the Red Devils, and it's all coming up here on TableRockSports.net. What do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com, helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Get ready for winter snowy, icy, slippery roads at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Bedford. We've stocked up on over 100 quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs, and every pre-owned 4x4 and all-wheel drive in stock is sale price. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. And our finance experts are ready to help with a quick, easy, and hassle-free process with great finance options. Be safe, warm, and secure this winter. Get to the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. So what do you do when you get injured on the job and need to know your rights with workers' compensation? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Safety for both teams. 
and also for the safety of our friends Coquille on their way home. Father, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we honor our veterans, current servicemen and women, and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedoms as we play our national anthem. And now we'll go ahead and meet the starlighters. First, in the visiting red doubles. A sophomore, number 11, Peyton Smith. A senior, number 15, Hunter Peyton. A senior, number 21, Zach Hawk. A senior, number 24, Peyton Miguel. A senior, number 30, Dean Hunter. The red devils are in the direction of head coach Wilson. Mark, just when you think you have Peyton Mauer figured out what he's going to do, he throws out something new. Well, he's always doing that. Every week he comes up with something original. you got to love that. Oh, yeah. Challengers in their home white uniforms with silver numerals and purple trim. The Red Devils in their road red uniforms with white numerals. Challengers control the tip. Tristan Wallace, the senior. Great pass from Frankowiak there to Wallace for the easy layup. Challengers out of backcourt. Layton, they'll feed it to Cadero. Steal by the Challengers. Coming out of backcourt, Jaron Frankowiak. Two. And right out of the gates, a couple of nice plays by the Challengers after a turnover. A uh, run out layup from Koyak, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That foul will be called against Peyton Leap. That'll be his first personal of the ball game at the free throw line. Frankoviak, the challenger's third leading scorer at 11 a game. Free throw attempt is good. 
So the challengers with the and one. And they lead five to nothing. Another steal by the challengers. Hall lays it up with the left hand, kisses it off the window, 4-2. And you mentioned the defensive pressure. The challengers are ramping that up as they usually do here to begin the game. Running it down, Hayden Gutierrez, senior wingman, passes over for Dean Tucker. And there's going to be a foul on the rebound. I think that's going to go on Fran Kowiak. First team foul for the challengers. Inbound. Bounce pass to Layton. He'll go through traffic, shot hard off the glass. And here comes Hall with the rebound. Up the floor he goes to Wallace. So challengers out of the gate quick. Layton being guarded by Anderson. They'll feed the ball near takeaway. Zach Farmer there. Gaderos had a travel call against the Red Devils. And the challenger defense very, very aggressive here early. Limiting their opponents to about 34% shooting on the year and limiting them to 40 points a game. Right in keeping with the goals that you talk about, Mark. Yep. Meanwhile, Batemauer. <laughs> Lefty good for two. 11-0 ball game. Challengers wasting no time in getting on the front foot. Gaderos way out high, right by the scores table. Layton gets around Hall. Gaderos loses the handle on the basketball. And four turnovers to open the game for... Coquille and they've only got one shot up so far and the challengers up 11-0 nice start again for the challenger we mentioned that how in the last meeting the challengers got 26 first quarter points Mauer up top Anderson fires his shot a little high and a little bit short offensive rebound Hall with it pulls up shoots from 15 his shot rims off but Anderson fights for the offensive rebound he puts it up and in 5.30 to go on the first timeout call. We'll be right back after these messages. Any phone you want. Anyone I want? Any phone you want. Say cheese. Connection is the greatest gift of all. At U.S. Cellular, we're offering any phone free for new and current customers. New and current customers get any phone free at Cisco Cellular, the Rogue Valley's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular. Visit SOUSCellular.com for details. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically... Back to action here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion. Layton picked up by Anderson to Gaderos. He'll start a drive on Hall. Some motion offense here. Layton can't get the shot to go. Ball's loose on the floor. And Hall tries to save it. Gaderos has it. And he puts it off the window for two. Coquille with their first field goal of the ball game. 4.59 to go in the first quarter of play. Anderson. Long skip pass to Frankoviak. Frankoviak, a 50-40-80 man this year for the Challengers. The kid can flat out shoot. He'll pull up and shoot from 17. He buries it. He's got four, four points. Tristan Wallace with four points. Challengers off to a great start here. In the ball game, Dean Tucker, the senior, passes up top, free throw line. Layton 
Lee going to kick it out. Farmer there. Shooting from the baseline. Shot rolls off. Weak side rebound by Maurer. Wasting no time getting it up the floor. Von Koviak, two. Jaron with seven in the ball game. Screen by Gaderos for Layton. Spinning is Layton. He'll get it out top. And Dean Tuck Tucker knocks it down. Yeah, he's their one shooter that you have to keep an eye on. And challengers were there right in his grill, and he still knocked it down. Sign of a good shooter. Front Koviak! Gets it right back on the other end. Quickly going the other way. Leak put the basketball against Wallace. Rims off. Tucker tries to run it down. Now we have a couple of substitutions at the ball game. Eli Bryant coming in for Cascade along with Derek Farmer. A couple of young fellows off the challenger bench that are a testament to the depth that the challengers have this year. Yeah, they are. Certainly are both. Mauer feeds it. Farmer, his shot rims off. Ball's loose. Bright trying to fight for it. And his last touch by Coquille. Normally a shot Farmer will make. Kind of surprised he didn't make that one, but the challengers get the ball back. We'll chalk it up to maybe a little bit of nerves. Freshman yeah, probably. playing in a varsity game. And a playoff game at that. Oh! He buries it! Drew Hall with five in the ball game. The Challengers up by 18. 2.54 left to go in the first quarter of play. With the basketball, Canyon Luckman. He cut through the paint. Gadero drives, pulls up, shoots, and it's good. Aiden Gadero. He's got it going early. And a rare turnover, at least in this game, by the Challengers. Tipped away. Coquille with the defense there. Now they're going to try to see if they can't start to make a little run here late in the first. Layton with the basketball. Double teamed. Luckman now driving the baseline. Whistle and a foul called against the challengers as Tucker went on the drive. It's going to be on Peyton Maurer. For the junior forward, that will be his first personal of the ball game. Just the second team foul against the challengers. Tristan Wallace back in the ball game as Maurer takes a breather. Pulling up and shooting with the lefty. That's a leap. Leap makes it 23 to nine. Farmer with the skip pass to Hall. He'll drive. Farmer gets a look at a three. That shot a little bit long, but Hall there with the offensive rebound. Tries a pass across the paint to Wallace, which is always a little bit of a high-risk maneuver tipped away by the Red Devils. Front Should have probably just shot it himself there. I think he probably could have got it off, but chose to not um, do that necessarily. Might have even drawn the foul. Anderson will kick it out. Paul Anderson will go into traffic. The shot blocked by Coquille, and they're on the break. Gideros, challengers get back quickly on defense. Layton will pull up. A little runner from the free throw line shot way short. There is Hall with the rebound. Anderson thinks about a three, but instead pulls up. Now Farmer will shoot. That shot off to the right, no good. Farmer struggling a little bit from the floor here early in the ball game. Gideros passes. There's Tucker with it. Gideros will penetrate. His shot in and out. Wallace with the rebound. Good help by Tristan Wallace right there coming over on the help side and getting in front of Gideros and uh, making altering that shot. Well, and that's one of those things. He's a, that guy that's great with the help defense. Eli Bryant with the reverse. Two. <laughs> Nice pass that time from Tristan Wallace and a good move along the baseline by Bryant. Eli Bryant 
Give them the challengers quality minutes off the bench. Gives them some height at 6'5", just a sophomore. Missed a lot of time with illness last year, but he's been one of your mainstays on the JV team this year. Matter of fact, he had a fantastic game against Crater on uh, Tuesday night. I'll try to feed it inside for a leap. Leap shot just a little bit short, disrupted by the challenger defense. Paul with the basketball, quickly up the floor to Wallace! And he scores! And we said they might not score 26 in the first quarter, but they did. They scored 27. So that will end the first quarter of play. The Challengers lead 27 to nine. We'll be right back with more action here on TableRockSports.net in just one minute. It takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring and forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. Well, there's no question, uh, challengers not taking this lightly, playing with the fire in their belly in the ball game. Yeah, the last game, it was a 26-10 lead after one. This game, it's a 27-9 lead after one. Luckman with the basketball, pressured by Maurer, works it for Layton, they'll work it down inside for Lee. He gets behind the defense, but can't get it to go. Nice. Quick pass up the floor. Skip pass for Hall. Anderson down inside for Mauer. Two. What have we got going on? Tight nickel foul. What is that about? Technical foul on who? And why? And why? Coach Brian Morse having a discussion with one of the officials, Jay Campbell. Makes you wonder if something wasn't maybe said. No, I'm, I'm guessing it was some celebration. Yeah. Is my guess. But obviously it wasn't anything because, you know, ball doesn't lie and both three throws are missed. So I guess we can just move on. Uh, there we go. Although it looks like Peyton Maurer picked up his second personal foul. So I'm guessing he must have been the one that said something or did something. Yeah. What? We don't we know. We only speculate. Luckman way out underneath and then he'll bounce it off of front Poviak. Setting the lineups for you, Gaderos is in there along with Leap, Luckman, Tucker, and Layton. The challengers with Wallace, Frankoviak, Maurer, Anderson, and Hall. Layton inbound, Leap with a drive to the hoop. The lefty shoots it and it's good. Now Leap has gotten out to a good start tonight for Coquille. Leap and Gaderos both with uh Four points just for the for the Coquille team so far. Frankoviak, open look. He doesn't need an engraved invitation to know what to do there. He's got 13 in the game already. Well, this challenger team is pick your poison. If Hall doesn't get you, Frankoviak will, or maybe Maurer, maybe Anderson. Drive by Gaderos, his shot rims off. And jump ball the call. And that will, uh, the alternating possession goes the way of the Cascade Christian Challengers, who lead in the ball game 13 to 11. 
I look up that school board, Mark. Uh, balanced scoring for the challengers tonight. Everybody getting in the act. Absolutely. It's good to see. Hall with the basketball. Frankoviak in the corner. Right of the paint. Hall triple team. And the ball's quickly up the floor for Lee. Shot short off the rim. Mauer up the floor to Hall. Hall for Mauer. It's shot in and out. Luckman with the long rebound. He'll take it out of backcourt. Up for Layton. Layton tries to feed it inside for Tucker. Shot rejected by Hall. Well, on a foul call. Didn't see it, but... Uh, no, it looked clean from here. Well, another thing that doesn't lie is the video, Mark. Let me just say that. That'll bring Tucker to the free throw line. And Derek, Peyton and Maurer had to go out. I think he's got some blood on his hand. And so Derek Farmer comes in. That's why he came in without it, uh, a shot being taken because of the blood issue. Tucker at the free throw line. I remember him being a weapon for Coquille early in the ball game, the last meeting between the two teams. Free throw attempt. Misses. Hall will take it out of backcourt. Frankoviak surveys, swings it around the horn. Wallace. Frankoviak, he'll shoot from long distance. Oh my goodness. He hasn't missed a shot yet. He's six for six. Well, I'll tell you what, you look at his numbers on the year, they're just insane. And he's got that, he's got that three-point shot down to a science, doesn't he? He sure does. And a steal by the challengers. Drew Hall out of backcourt. To the line, shooting two, Drew Hall. A block called against Coquille. And that'll send Drew Hall to the free throw line. The challengers leading scorer on the year, averaging nearly 18 points a game. He's got six now in this one as he makes the first one. Eli Bryant. Checking into the ball game. Second attempt misses. Ball's tipped around. There's Tucker there with the rebound. Outlets for Gadaros. Layton with the basketball. Tucker drives, pulls up, shoot, shot long. They're fighting for the rebound. Underneath for Coquille is Isaac Felton, who's in the ball game. Went off his hands and go out of bounds. 4.49 to go in the half. Drew Hall gets a break. Peyton Maurer back in the game after getting his hand uh, bandaged up a little bit there. Fran Koviak fakes the look at the three. Bryant tries to feed it inside. Anderson, his shot off target. Ball tipped around. Maurer kicks it out. Round the horn it goes. Frankoviak, and it's stolen away. With the steal, Luckman. And an offensive foul. Yeah, nice job that time by Anderson stepping in front. And Luckman commits the offensive foul. And for Luckman, that'll be his first foul of the ball game. Two team fouls against a little low foul count tonight. Zach Farmer getting ready to check in for Coquille wearing number 21. Got that big football player's build. Anderson on the backcourt, he's there with Farmer. Anderson swings it. Down in the corner, Frankoviak. He'll shoot from long range. This shot a little bit long. Ball tipped around. Got a scrum going on. And tying him out for Coquille. 
357 left to go in the half. Challengers lead 35-12. We'll be right back after these messages on tablerocksports.net. you do when you don't know the first step in applying for social security disability it's easy just go to letusfightforyou.com that's it letusfightforyou.com helping oregonians get justice for over 40 years daily adventures start right here at pinnacle 365 you'll find exactly what you need for your morning motivation later in the day add some crunch to your lunch with crispy crunchy chickens mouth-watering chicken and chicken tenders Wherever your next adventure takes you, we're here to keep you energized throughout the day. And our New Peak Rewards program helps you save money on fuel so you can travel further for less. Daily adventures are better with Pinnacle 365. There's a time machine that takes you back to a world just a few streets wide. So dive into the past and let them see the world through a simpler lens called Southern Oregon. Their adventure begins when you Back to action here, double team, and a steal by the challengers. Out of backcourt comes Peyton Mauer, two. Gaderos, up top it goes for Farmer. Farmer up top. Now, Layton, Tucker, he drives the baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. Another turnover for Coquille. Here. Cannon Anderson coming in. Got nine so far in the game. And ideally, that's about the range you want to have it for the game. Yeah, and then, you know, somewhere around 10 to 12 usually for a game, but still they've got nine here with three minutes to go in the first half. Challenger defense has done a good job of turning the ball over and getting some easy looks, especially. Standing on the gas. Hall with the basketball from three. A shot short. Offensive rebound by Peyton Maurer. Up top it goes. Anderson swings it for Hall. Now we got Peyton Maurer at the free throw line. Farmer feeds it inside. Bryant, a little fadeaway. Oh. Off to the left. Surprised he missed that one. A little chippy inside. Those are the ones you got to make. Good ball movement by the Challengers to get him a good look. And those are the ones he usually makes. Leap. He's trapped, but manages to get it out of danger for the Red Devils. Layton. Skip pass over for Farmer. Feet inside. And out of bounds. Say last touch by Farmer. Tristan Wallace back in the ball game. Bryant comes out. Frankoviak back in the ball game. And Farmer, Derek Farmer is. We got two Farmers in the game. Derek for Cascade and Zach for Coquille. Hall from three is shot a little bit long. And was out of bounds. Hit the wire, the guy okay. wire above the hoop. So. That, that's an automatic, uh, goes to the other team. Don't see those happen every day. Oh, big high bounce off the, off the rim and hits the wire above the basket. Gaderos in the backcourt. Guarded by Hall. He'll drive hard to the hole. Rejected by Hall. It'll be inbounds for the Red Devils underneath their own basket. Layton with the basketball, inbounds, and the shot off the window, Isaac Felton for two. 37-14, and Gaderos falls to the floor, and Coquille calling the timeout. And we'd like to go ahead and take a timeout as well. We'll take a quick one here, and then we'll be back here on TableRockSports.net. Game day adventure starts at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouth-watering crispy, crunchy chicken party meals. Featuring bone-in, tenders, 
and wings. Make sure you remember the biscuits. You're sure to be the hit of the party when you show up with the crispy crunchy chicken party meal. Plus, with our Peak Rewards app, you can be earning savings on fuel for your next fill up. Enjoy your game day adventures more at Pinnacle 365. Is that Marty sitting behind the coquille bench? Yep. Mm. Mm. Back to the Cascade Christian Pavilion. Challengers lead in the ball game, 37 to 14. 140 to go on the half. Anderson, they're on the defense. A little bit of token pressure there by the challengers. Anderson, a good perimeter defender. Leap on the drive. Pass it up top, swing it, cross court it goes. Gadaros will shoot and a shot in and out. Layton, good feet underneath. He finds Leap and he scores. Leap with six in the ball game. Score at 37-15. Uh, Cannon Anderson, he'll shoot from mid-range. His shot no good. Ball tipped around. Last touch by the Challengers. Tristan Wallace back in the game. Mason Hoffman in the game, too, for the Challengers. Huh. Mason, one of, the, one of those swing players for Cascade Christian. Junior, about six foot four, place kicker on the Challenger football team this year. And a steal by Drew Hall. He can't control it, and it goes out of bounds. Almost. Drew with a few steals tonight so far, and a couple of easy buckets off of them. Challengers have been active this evening. Gaderos takes the inbound. Passes cross court. Tucker fires his shot, rims off. Frankoviak, one of the shortest guys on the floor with the rebound. Well, we've talked about how the challengers have had to learn how to rebound, and you're seeing guards do, getting a lot more rebounds than they were earlier in the season when they could rely on Austin Maurer to get a lot of the rebounds. So guys like uh, Cannon Anderson and Frankoviak and Drew Hall have definitely been working hard on the boards here since uh, Austin's been out. Frankoviak launches the shot. It's good. He's got four threes now in the game. At 19 in the half. Meanwhile, Leap with the basketball. Fires from the baseline. It's good. He's got eight. Leap does. Hall. His buzzer heave. No good, but that will end the first half of play. One half of basketball in the book. We'll take a quick timeout, and then we'll be back with the Bedford Parks and Recreation Halftime Report on TableRockSports.net. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress, knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of. And it allows your service to be more meaningful, with all of your wishes being taken care of. Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. game day for a family get together. Sherms has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherms Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. We love our sports here. It's our responsibility to keep them great. 
And we need you to know your role. You can be a player. You can be a coach. You can be a spectator. Or an official. But you only get to be one. Know your role. Parents, release your kid to the game. It's my experience. Don't yell at the refs. They have a hard job. Know your role. Players, respect your opponents. Love to play, win or lose. Know your role. So what do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Our halftime report brought to you by the Medford Parks and Recreation Department. The new Winter Recreation Guide just hit your mailbox and is available online. Sign-ups are happening for events, classes, and sports leagues for all. See what's up at playmedford.com. And Mark, the challengers, they jumped out early. And though Sutherland, I mean Sutherland, Coquille has had their moments here in the ball game. The uh, challengers, 40 points on the board early on. They've got to be feeling good about their first half of basketball. Well, they really do. We talked about most of the time how the Challengers aim to, to hold teams to single-digit quarters. They did just that. Coquille, nine, quarter, nine points in the first quarter, nine points in the second quarter for their 18 points. The Challengers, meanwhile, want to want to score at least 15 points a quarter. They score 27 in the first and another 13 in the second to give them the 40 and have a nice commanding lead here at halftime by 22 points. Uh, shooting first for Cascade Christian on the on the half 17 for 29 that's 59 percent uh, for Coquille 8 for 24 33 percent that's really the difference in the game right there um, Challengers shooting a really nice percentage in that first half and Coquille struggling against that uh, Challenger pressure defense uh, from the free throw line the Challengers 2 for 3 67 percent Coquille one for four, just 25%. And then the turnover battle, uh, the Challengers with just five turnovers in the first half, about where you want to be. Meanwhile, Coquille had 10 in that first half. Scoring first for Coquille, uh, Leap had eight, De Gaderos had four, Tucker with four, and Isaac Felton off the bench with two. That's their scoring for the Challengers in the first half. Eli Bryant off the bench with two. Peyton Maurer had six. Drew Hall with six. Uh, Tristan Wallace had six. Cannon Anderson with two. And leading the way, Jaron Frankowiak with 19 points in that first half. A really nice half for him. Four three-pointers, three two-pointers, three two and a free throw. And uh, just setting the pace for the Challengers. He shot, by my count, uh, he was seven for eight from the field in the first half. Well, I tell you what, the point uh, production definitely suggests that. Very, very efficient, and he's been that way all season long that uh, you know, this counter team, there's six players shooting over 50% on the year, and what's crazy is you have perimeter players like Drew Hall and Jaron Frankoviak. Drew is pushing 60%. Yeah, and Drew is struggling a little bit tonight from the three-point line. He's made all of his inside shots but isn't has missed a few threes, but other than that, he's been... Uh, addition out the assist too and has done a nice job of that in the first half and always like to see him uh, getting involved in the assist category because he just helps all of his teammates um, be better and you saw Tristan Wallace I think the recipient of two or three of those assists from him as he gets six points in the first half that's above his average if I remember right for the about game three a game is about his average because it's, he's just not a guy that looks to score a lot get a lot of shots off but a nice job in the first half by him of getting six points and and, you know, it's good. It's just good to see everybody pretty much that played in that first half get themselves in the scoring column. Well, and I imagine for Coquille, as they look at the second half, what they want their MO to be is uh, trying to counter that challenger defense and, and, and taking care of the basketball. That that probably chief among, you know, the things that they want to work on will be uh, – making sure that they don't turn the ball over so they get shot opportunities. Well, absolutely. And if you look at their ranking right now, just looked at the OSAA, and they're ranked number 21, and the top 20 teams get in the state tournament. So obviously a win for them tonight would be important in them maybe securing a spot in the playoffs. Uh, even a loss, though, probably helps them because they played such 
you know, bad competition in, in our league, it might even help them move up in the rankings even if they lose to the challengers tonight. So they're right on the edge of getting in the playoffs. So I'm sure they're, they're uh, you know, going to try and do everything they can here in the second half to uh, close the gap and see if they can put a run on the challengers. Well, there's a lot of basketball going on. And last night, the St. Mary's Crusaders ended up winning by 12 against South Umpqua. And uh, tonight, St. Mary's in action against Douglas. And then, uh, of course, we're looking for uh, the Challengers to be back in action on Saturday. Yeah, the Challengers will play the winner of that Douglas-St. Mary's game on Saturday. Uh here at Cascade, provided the Challengers win, of course. Uh, they're off to a good start here with that 40 to, excuse me, to 18 lead. And, uh, yeah, they would play each other, Douglas and Cascade, should Douglas win or Cascade and could play St. Mary's a third time if somehow St. Mary's comes away with a victory in that game. Well, certainly St. Mary's one of those teams that we've seen that they, they've got the athletes and at times that they have come up with a few surprises along the way so it'll be uh, interesting to, to see how that game that game being uh, streamed on Cable Rock Sports tonight having a little bit of trouble with the internet here or trying to see if I couldn't try, chase down a score for you Joseph Brett uh, covering that game tonight on behalf of the broadcast team tonight's halftime report is brought to you by the Medford Parks and Recreation Department. They invite you to discover all the great classes, field trips, activities, and sports leagues coming up. Visit playmedford.com to find something for everyone in the family. Jim McCoy here along with Mark McLemore and Johnny McCoy on the camera. We'll uh, take a quick timeout, then we'll get ready for the start of the second half here on tablerocksports.net. I'm Pat Cox with Sherm's Food Stores. The employees of Sherm's are proud to be part of your community. We have thousands of customers in our stores every day, and our checkers know a lot of them on a first name basis. They tend to enjoy what they do, and they love it, so it reflects in how they treat the customer. If you live anywhere in Southern Oregon, there's a Sherm's store near you. We hope to see you soon. If you shop with us, you will save money. Daily adventure starts at Pinnacle 365. Accelerate your day with morning motivation. That midday pick-me-up pit stop. Plus, earn free rewards with our Peak Rewards app. And when you buy Red Bull, Old Wisconsin Jerky, and many other items, you'll accumulate big savings on fuel. With locations in Oregon and California, we are here to keep you energized throughout the day. And with our Peak Rewards app, we'll help you travel further for less, keeping more money in your pockets. Daily adventures are better with Pinnacle 365. Getting ready for the start of the second half. Mark was able to get it in on his phone, and right now Douglas leading in the ball game against St. Mary's. Yeah, 43 to 30 in the second quarter. Douglas is up on St. Mary's, up at Douglas. Well, and uh, as we know from times past, that Douglas team can be a dangerous team. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they're very uh, athletic. They're a very athletic group, and uh, sometimes they, when they are on shooting the basketball, they can score a lot of points in a hurry, uh, as you can see from uh, the score currently. It is 40-18 to 18 as we begin the start of the third quarter. The Red Devils will come out with Leighton, Gaderos, Tucker, Farmer, and then also in the lineup is Peyton Leap, who's been leading the way in scoring. And actually, uh, Jim, just an update. It is the third quarter up there. Excuse me. Okay. It just uh, looks like Joe uh, has the wrong quarter on his scoreboard because I just got a glimpse of the clock, and it's the third quarter. Well, I, I, I couldn't imagine anybody making that mistake. Uh, yeah, you've never done that, right, Jim? Oh, oh never. <laughs> oh, here... Coquille starting out the second half with the basketball. Tucker has it stripped away by Hall. Hall out of the backcourt. And Coquille quickly back on defense. Hall has an open look from three. And it's good. Just because he struggled from the three-point line in the first half doesn't mean he's not going to shoot it in the second. Shooter, he knocks shoot. down. He knocks down that uh, three-pointer right there. Give the challengers a good start to the third quarter. He's got nine in the ball game 
Around the horn it goes. Fleet, cross-court pass for Gaderos. He'll kick it back out for Layton. Up top it goes, Tucker. Challengers up by 25 in the game. But still, even if you're the trailing team, you want to be patient, be smart about your shot opportunities. Hall out of backcourt. He had a double-double against St. Mary's with 20 and 13. Hall, his shot short, but there is Frankoviak. Two. Frankoviak with 21. Yeah, nice job by Jaron. Just uh, being in the right spot at the right time and just getting that little jump shot right back up as soon as he got the rebound. Look what I found. Exactly. Challengers continuing to play that good defense, and Coquille has yet to find an answer. Gaderos on the feed from Tucker. Leap. Tucker has it. Gaderos right in front of his bench. He'll drive to the hole. Shot rejected by Drew Hall. Drew Hall with several blocks in this game. Guys, you know, he, he's deceptively good on defense, Drew Hall is. You don't, you don't really think that, oh, this guy's that good of a defender. But at the end of the day, he makes great plays on defense just as much as he does on offense. Well, you know one thing for sure. If you want to play for Brian Hall, you, uh, Brian Morris, you got to defend. Yes, you do. Drew Hall doing that very well this evening. Steals and blocks. Coming into the game, he had just seven on the year. That uh, in the absence of Austin Maurer, Peyton Maurer has been kind of the main guy for that. And then we've been getting a similar play from Colson Brown and from Eli Bryant. Ball tipped away, talking about good defense, Peyton Maurer getting his hands in there, disrupting the flow. Cascade Christian going to go ahead and call a 30-second timeout. That will allow us to break away momentarily as well. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. This is Maya. As an embedded systems engineering student at Rogue Community College, Maya spends a lot of time in the lab learning circuit design and making great connections with her instructors and classmates. By riding the bus and not owning a car, Maya saves almost $1,000 a month. RVTD helps Maya get to and from class safely and easily, enabling her to invest in her bright future at Oregon Tech. Way to go, Maya! Forty-five, eighteen here. Challengers with the lead. Douglas leading against St. Mary's in their ball game. Looking forward to the possibility of some Saturday basketball at the Pavilion. Frankoviak getting in there defensively for the Challengers. He'll be whistled for the foul. I believe that will be his second of the ball game. And that's just the first team foul of the, first, of the uh, second half. So the officials letting the players play tonight. Yeah, on both sides. And it has been a fairly clean game. It has. These teams are physical, but... And a foul called against Coquille. That's going to go against Hayden Gaderos. That's his first of the ball game. Yeah, no one really in foul trouble for either team. Taking a peek over at the St. Mary's game. Douglas up now 56-38 on St. Mary's and pretty much in control of that one. Cannon Anderson. And down to the corner, Frankoviak. His shot just a little bit long. Wallace there with the carom. Paul shoots, and he buries it. Drew Hall with another triple. Cross-court pass, leak to Caderos. And uh, Drew, Drew Hall. Hall. Kind of got up. right up there in his grill. And yeah, just a little too much from Drew that time, his second. Again, no one really in foul trouble from either team. And you can see how some of the Coquille body language just wears. It wears on you when you always got somebody right in your grill the whole game. And that's the way the challengers love to play. And it's tough on the other team. 
Well, and that's for so much conditioning, among other things, is a problem and a travel call against Coquille. Another turnover, and the Challengers holding Coquille blank so far here in the in the third quarter. No points for Coquille here, just as the game started in the first quarter. It's been that way here in the third. Hall gets away from the defender. And throws it to the first row, to Liam in the first row. Of the, <laughs> of the, Liam's not on your team, Drew. Yeah. Of course, that brings back memories now of Liam and his pick six during football season. There you go. But unless he's got a uniform on, which he doesn't. No, he should have probably just uh, shot that one just for the heck of it anyway, though. Yeah. Maybe a little heat check. There you go. Tucker with Derek Farmer on him. He's in the ball game for the challengers. Eli Bryant getting set to come in. And the shot in and out by Layton. Rebound by Peyton Maurer. He had dish off Hall. Frankoviak. Skip pass over to Farmer. Hall's going to shoot from long range. Shot rims off, but there's Anderson. And that's what happens. You might as well go ahead and put it up there in the paint, even if you give away some height, because you might just draw the foul, and that's what he did. Yeah, nice job by Anderson getting in there and getting an offensive board for his team and earning himself a trip to the free throw line. Cannon Anderson averaging seven and a half a game on the season for the Challengers. First free throw attempt, it is good. Saw him putting in some extra time with his dad, Scott Anderson, before warm-ups this evening. And Cannon, one of those guys, is just not going to get outworked. No, he definitely will not. And deceptively, you know, I was surprised to find out, looking at the stats for the challenge, he's second on the team in the steals. Yeah, he, he is, does a great job of just being aggressive. He plays very aggressive, very uh, on his front foot, and that's uh, a good thing to do. Meanwhile, drive to the hoop by Layton. I think uh, Peyton Maurer is going to pick his third up, I think. And now it says it's just his second. And that'll send Layton to the free throw line. First free throw attempt, a little bit short. Gets that front end and it remains a 50 to 18 ball game. So what's that, Challengers 10 to nothing in the third? Make 10, it to, 10 one. to one. Challenger fans are saying, you spoke too soon. Near steal there, Luckman got a hand on it defensively. Couldn't quite catch up to it. Getting set to check in for the Red Devils is senior Aiden Hahn. He'll get his first action of the night. Mason Hoffman also in the ball game. Saw a little bit of him earlier. Farmer in the corner. Now Hall, he's gonna drive in traffic. Farmer will shoot. Shot off to the left, no good. Ball tipped around. And coming away with it are the Coquille Red Devils. Luckman with the basketball. Hoffman with them defensively. Luckman, Layton, Gaderos, Tucker. And a steal by Drew Hall. Hall with the basketball. Lays it a little too hard off the glass. Offensive rebound by Mason Hoffman. Eli Bryant knocks it down. Good work by Mason, not assuming that the that Drew was going to make that bucket. And coming and getting that rebound and giving Eli Bryant a good look from three. He's got that range. He's got five in the ball game. Gaderos gets around Hall. Double team along the baseline. Gets back out for Layton. Layton against Farmer. Hahn trying to offer a screen there. Layton dumps it off. Hahn making a move, kicks it out. Luckman dumps down inside. Little reverse move by Gaderos, and he misses. 
Hall with the basketball, moving. Hoffman will shoot. His shot rims off. Ball's tipped around. Looked like Eli Bright got a hand on it there. And it came out to Farmer. Mauer, Farmer shoots, and it's good. His first field goal of the ball game makes it 56-19. Not afraid to shoot it, even though he's struggled a little bit in this one. Finally gets one to go in. 56-19. Well, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So true. And when you got an open one, you got to take it. Well, and you know that he, he's got it in his game. It'd be one thing if he didn't, but. He helps extend the challenger lead. We have three challenger starters getting ready to check back in the ball game. Leighton with a little bit of a circus shot there. Hoffman in the backcourt, had it for a moment, tips it back for Hall. Mason Hoffman, up the floor he goes. He'll be picked up by Luckman. <coughs> Hoffman at the corner of the free throw line. Bryant shoots the shot just a little off target, and there's Tucker with the weak side rebound. He'll dump it off for Layton. 24 seconds left to go in the third. And the guys waiting at the table look like they're going to wait until the end of the quarter. That may end up being the case. <laughs> Meanwhile, a drive shot no good. Rebound by Farmer. Farmer quickly up the floor for Hall. Four seconds. Hall with Peyton Maurer. And it's blocked. And at the end of three, the Challengers lead 56 to 19. We'll be right back after these messages. What do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Get ready for winter snowy, icy, slippery roads at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Bedford. We've stocked up on over 100 quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs, and every pre-owned 4x4 and all-wheel drive in stock is sale price. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. And our finance experts are ready to help with a quick, easy, and hassle-free process with great finance options. Be safe, warm, and secure this winter. Get to the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. So what do you do when you get injured on the job and need to know your rights with workers' compensation? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. While we were away at the break and talking a little bit, Mark, dominant quarter for the challengers. Yeah, outscore, outscore Coquille 16-1 to in the quarter. So a nice job by the challengers just extending that lead and just guaranteeing pretty much the victory at this point. Well, you talk about hitting your defensive goals. Oh, absolutely. At one point in a quarter, that's uh, phenomenal. Jaron Frankoviak is shot just a little off to the left. He hasn't missed much tonight. And we'll have a loose ball foul called against the challengers. Neither team anywhere near close to the penalty. That one on Tristan Wallace. That's just his first of the ball game. And, Mark, you've been tracking a little bit of that Douglas St. Mary's game. Yeah, it's gotten it's a little tighter. Yeah, just recently, it's a commercial at the moment. but. And we have a travel call against Tucker and Coquille. 7.23 left to go. We're at the running clock now. As it's one of, one of the new rules installed this year. Yeah, 30 points. Challenger's up by more than that, obviously. Swing it quickly, Hall shoots, and he scores! His fourth three of the afternoon as well. He's got 15 now on the night. He and Jaron Frankoviak leading the way for Cascade this evening. Tucker shoots from long range. And there is Drew Hall. And I don't know how on earth they don't call a foul on that. Well, the guy climbs on his back, and he's got no foul. That is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So Coquille gets the ball.
Leap has the basketball. The Tucker. Another turnover by Coquille, and the Challengers get it back. Uh, the, it's 67-61 now. Douglas with the lead in the fourth quarter against St. Mary's. So the uh, Crusaders with a nice run. Call goes against Coquille. Hunter Layton with the foul. And that'll just be his first personal foul of the ball game. There haven't been a ton of fouls called in this game, actually. No. Both teams have played fairly clean. Shot a little bit short. And rebound taken by Isaac Felton. They'll feed it to Tucker. His shot along the baseline, no good. But their leap. He's been a bright spot for Coquille in the evening. And a timeout called. We will take one as well. 5.05 to go in the ball game. We'll be right back after these messages. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to play. Okay, that ended up being a quick timeout. So now we're back to action. Dylan Westlake. Now will feed it over for Mason Hoffman. Farmer to Bryant. Bryant tries to go inside. Dumps it off for Derek Farmer. Bounce pass to Dylan Westlake. Try to feed it for Bryant. Challengers showing patience offensively. Mason Hoffman, it's good. And he's got range on a shot. Speaking with guys who like to shoot threes, I have a Kellen Klecker sighting. Yes, we do. Nice job by Mason getting on the scoreboard here in this one. He's played some good minutes for the Challengers tonight. Indeed he has. Skip pass over for Tucker. Tucker guarded by Farmer. 4.09 and counting to go. Gadero strikes the shot. And Bryant had the rebound for a moment, but it is wrestled away by Felton. Clayton drives to the hoop. Goes up with the left hand. We have a whistle and a foul called against the Cascade Christian Challengers. And that will send Layton to the charity stripe. He's one for two so far there tonight. Layton, first free throw attempt is good. It's now a 40 point game at 62 22. Tristan Wallace goes up, and here comes Kellen Plucker. Second attempt, that one's good. 62-23, 345 left to go. Plucker, cross-court pass to his cousin, Mason Hoffman. And that one gets away from the challengers. Up the floor, Tucker will shoot the three. That one rims off, and there is a jump ball called. Bryant and Felton there contesting for the basketball. Got to do your work early when you're trying to box somebody as big as Felton off the boards, and Bryant lets him go kind of over the top of him and get that rebound. Felton, his shot, no good. Loose ball picked up by Tucker. Three minutes left to go in the ball game. Gaderos feeds it down low. Dean Tucker guarded by Hoffman. 
Skip pass up top for Leap. Layton guarded by Westlake. And when you're being guarded by Westlake, you know it. Yes, you do. And a travel call against Coquille. And that challenger second group even doing a good job defensively for Cascade there. Well, that's the status you want to work up to to say, hey, there's no drop-off when we go into the game. Hoffman shoots, rims off, comes out to Layton. Time winding down, and the jumper there by Felton, no good. Farmer out of backcourt. A swing it over. Bryant will shoot. Looked like he might have rushed it just a wee tad. Yeah, he did. Westlake tried to, not, you know, wasn't a bad idea there. On the drive. Going to the hoop. Leap. Unsuccessful. And there is Mason Hoffman with 134 to go in the ball game. Cascade Christian calling a quick 30-second timeout. No, I think just to get some substitutes in. Today's game brought to you by Schlesinger and DeVillanu, attorneys with practices throughout Southern Oregon. And the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role campaign, promoting respectful and civil behavior at youth sporting events. Rogue Valley Transportation District invites you to save on car payments, gas, and insurance by riding the bus. Expanded routes and hours will get you where you need to go. Visit rvtd.org. That reminds me, Mark, that I decided to get my wife something expensive for Valentine's Day, so I got her a tank of gas. Oh, there you go. That's about right these days, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 62.23. Sure she appreciated that, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bryant inside. Kellen Klecker, it's good. The victory cigar gets in the scoring column and puts the challengers up 65 to 23. In the ball game, Deacon Johnson. And a steal by Bryant. Bryant, he'll lay it up and in. You know he was thinking it. Oh, he was, and he looked back and thought better. Good decision on his part. Absolutely. 52 seconds left. Bryant has seven off the challenger bench tonight. Johnson, who's just checked in the ball game, steal by Farmer. Farmer drives hard to the hole. Westlake is there, can't get the shot to go. Last touch by Coquille with 31 seconds. Wesley got fouled on that rebound, but they knew it was going to go out of bounds for the challenger, so they let it go. Dylan Westlake, 5'8 junior. Clucker going to shoot in and out. Ball tipped around. Coming up with a rebound is Aiden Hahn. Eight seconds left to go in the contest. And Layton going to dribble it out. And the challengers win the ball game. They continue on in the league playoff tournament, and we'll be right back after these messages on TableRockSports.net with the Conger Morris postgame show. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress, knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of. And it allows your service to be more meaningful, with all of your wishes being taken care of. 
Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. Had a total of five points. It takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring and forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Taft Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. Okay. That sounds like it'd be about right. Here we are at the Conger Morris post game show. Hometown help through difficult times at Conger Morris Funeral Directors. Recapping today's scoring and looking at some key stats from the night and I know Mark came up with a big one uh, while we were away at the break, and I'll let him share that. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, uh, what a game tonight for the Challengers. They got out of the gate quickly, and this is just one of those games that was a no doubt. Or I mean, I think probably anybody, even the most ardent Coquille fan, would know that Challengers being at home uh, with the season that they've had, that they would be a favorite going into this ball game. But one of the things we learned with the battle that the Challenger girls put up against Coquille on Tuesday night is that uh, you can't always just assume that, 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 that perhaps if a team has an opportunity, begins to get some confidence, they might find themselves fighting their way into making it a tough ball game. But the Challengers wanted to get out on the front foot this evening, and they most certainly did that in defeating the Challengers and then now they'll be up against Douglas on Saturday. Douglas, now we can confirm for you, an eight-point winner against St. Mary's. And that game, more than likely, we're thinking it's going to be at 5 o'clock, but we'll try to get that confirmed. And obviously, if you go to the Challenger Athletics website, you will uh, get the recap on the game, and, and we'll have that for you when it comes. We'll take a quick timeout, and when we return, Mark's working on the uh, post-game stats. Some interesting things to bring your way on that count, and that will follow these messages here on TableRockSports.net. What do you do when you don't know the first step in applying for Social Security Disability? It's easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com, helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Daily adventures start right here at Pinnacle 365. You'll find exactly what you need for your morning motivation. Later in the day, add some crunch to your lunch with crispy, crunchy chickens, mouth-watering chicken, and chicken tenders. Wherever your next adventure takes you, we're here to keep you energized throughout the day. And our New Peak Rewards program helps you save money on fuel so you can travel further for less. Daily adventures are better with Pinnacle 365. There's a time machine that takes you back to a world just a few streets wide. So dive into the past and let them see the world through a simpler lens called Southern Oregon. Their adventure begins when you travel Medford. Well. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress 
knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of, and it allows your service to be more meaningful with all of your wishes being taken care of. Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. All right, here we go. Back out here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, the challengers on the winning end of a game against Coquille tonight. And here's the post-game stats from Mark McLemore. Well, an amazing part of that, Jim, is Coquille only gets five points in the second half and only one field goal, the rest free throws. So they only make one basket in the second half against the Challengers. They end up shooting, remember we said they were 8 for 24 in the first half. They finished the game 9 for 38, just 24% from the field. And the Challengers do a great job defensively against them. They have 16 turnovers um, to the Challengers, just 9. And uh, the Challengers, meanwhile, shoot 26 for 51. That's 51% on the evening. And um, just a fabulous job by the Challengers tonight defensively from the outset, holding Coquille to just 23 points in the entire ballgame. So a great job by the Challengers defensively. And, you know, they put up 67 points as well on the offensive side of it. Uh, so they do a good job there, shoot 51%. They were 4 for 5 from the free throw line. That's 80%. Meanwhile, Coquille, four for eight from the free throw line, just 50%. Um, turnovers, like I mentioned, uh, Coquille with 16, the Challengers with just nine. Uh, scoring, first for Coquille, Peyton Leap led the way for them. He had 10. Uh, Hunter Layton had three. Uh, Gaderos had four. Tucker with four. And Isaac Felton with two. And that's it for them. Uh, again, they only had nine field goals in the entire game and uh, just struggled scoring the basketball against that Challenger defense. For Cascade Christian, leading the way tonight for the Challengers, Fran Jaron Frankowiak with 21 uh, points tonight. Behind him, Drew Hall had 15, Cannon Anderson with 4, Tristan Wallace with 6, Mason Hoffman had 3, Derek Farmer with 3, Peyton Maurer with 6, Kellen Klecker had 3, and Eli Bryant with 7 off the Challenger branch. And I thought Eli had a nice game tonight for Cascade Christian. Did the things that they were expecting him to do. And... Uh, and, you know, as you mentioned, has a, he's a very athletic kid and has a good opp good chance now, I think, to continue to build on this momentum. He's starting to get some more time in, in those varsity games and hopefully continue to improve his performance in those games. So a nice job all the way around by the Challengers. Just, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned it. They took care of business tonight. I mean, they this was business for them. They've got another game to, on Saturday that needs to be business. And then, you know, right now they're ranked number five in the OSAA. Uh, poll, uh, if they can, you know, win again against a quality Douglas team, might be able to even move up in the top four. That would be ideal yes. for them going into the state tournament. Well, with this victory, the Challengers raised their record to 22 and four on the season. Coquille wraps up with a 16 and 11 record. Well, and, and they may, you know, we talked about it. They're right on the edge of making that state tournament. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get their ranking up. Yeah, you know, 220 or or lower, they can get in the top 20. They have a good chance of somehow sneaking into the state tournament. Absolutely. Well, that'll wrap up tonight's ball game where the Challengers defeat the Coquille Red Devils by a score of 67 to 23. We'd like to thank you for watching tonight's streaming action. We'd like to thank Cascade Christian Athletic Director Nate Maven for hosting the Lithia Superstore Game of the Night on TableRockSports.net. And today's broadcast, our special thanks to head coaches Willie Layton and Brian Morse. Our next Table Rock Sports production featuring Cascade Christian will be on Saturday. We're thinking most likely at 5 o'clock against the Douglas Trojans. Again, the final score on the John L. Scott scoreboard, the Challengers 67 and the Red Devils 23. This has been a special presentation of Table Rock Sports. Our executive producer is Joe Brett. With Mark McLemore and Johnny McCoy, I'm Jim McCoy saying thanks for watching and good night from Cascade Christian High School in Medford, Oregon. <laughs>